Hi, my name is Chris Irwin. I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Nutrition and Dietetics at Griffith University. Athletes are now at a time in this isolation period when they're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. And soon, they'll be looking to return to a more formal training. This means that a range of topics are starting to be discussed by coaches and athletes. One that is likely to come up is weight. Where are you in relation to pre-isolation weight? How have you managed energy balance? And where do you need to be to minimise risk of injury when training recommences? A scale weight is made up of many components of your physique. And although weight is not a good reflection of your physique or changes in physique, since being in isolation, it can be used to compare to other times in your training and competition history. Weight is notorious for fluctuating over days of the week and even within a single day. Research has shown that even healthy older people who are just sitting around in a hospital can see weight fluctuations of up to 1% over a day. Add in exercise, food and fluid intake, sodium intake, changes in clothing, and all of a sudden it's easy to see fluctuations in weight, both within a day and across days that are upwards of 2%. Due to this large variability, the best time to weight yourself is when your activity and dietary intake is consistent the day before and reflective of a normal state. Monday morning after waking up, before doing any physical activity and after you've been to the toilet is often the best time to get an accurate weight. Alternatively, if Sunday is a big training day, you might choose the day after a recovery day, but you get the idea, sometime in the week when you are pretty consistent. Small changes in hydration status can influence your daily weight. In fact, weight can be a way to monitor changes in hydration status from one day to the next. Fluctuations in carbohydrate stores, in other words glycogen, and water stored with it, can significantly influence weight. The difference between a normal glycogen stored weight and glycogen depleted weight can be as much as 1 to 2 kilograms. If you add lots of salt to food or eat lots of highly processed foods, then you will likely retain extra fluid, leading to higher body weight in and around the consumption of those foods. Fibre content of the diet and the speed of digestion can result in gut and bowel contents contributing to scale weight. Obviously, weighing yourself in different clothing states will add or remove weight. For female athletes, hormonal changes, especially in the days before menstruation, will influence body weight. Oestrogen and progesterone play a role in fluid regulation, and when these hormones fluctuate, so too does body water accumulation or water retention. The main point of all this is be consistent and try to find a time in the week when all of these influences will have minimal impact on your body weight. Track your menstrual cycle so you can identify times when body weight is expected to fluctuate. For reliable weights, use the same scales each day and replace the batteries often. A better quality set of scales will likely give you more accurate weight readings. Place scales on flat, hard level ground, not on carpet. Weigh yourself first thing in the morning after going to the toilet. Don't weigh yourself at various stages throughout the day. Ensure your weight is always taken either nude or with minimal clothing, for example, dry swimmers, and while you're not wearing socks or shoes. If removing clothing for a nude weight, make sure all clothing items are clear of the scale. On each occasion, weigh yourself twice to ensure you have a consistent result and record your results in the context of other information, such as menstrual cycle timing. A maximum of once a week should be enough to provide insight into weight trends and not lead to over-analysis of weight changes. Look, expect fluctuations. You can remain stable within a weight range, not a single number. Over the long term, energy balance is maintained in weight-stable individuals. But over shorter periods of monitoring, for example day to day, weight can vary. So don't be concerned that you have an energy imbalance if your body weight varies. Don't let emotions get involved. Stay neutral and non-emotive in your response to the numbers. And act only when there is a definitive trend. If monitoring your weight is having a negative impact on you and fluctuations are causing you to become overly concerned, talk to your program sports dietitian. One thing is clear, there is plenty of time for most people until next year's Olympics and other major competitions, so don't over-analyse changes in weight. When you're back to normal training, ensure you get a more accurate measure of physique to find out how it has changed. 
and what your weight means from a performing physique perspective. Don't forget, there are lots of people to help you during this period. Don't be afraid to get in touch with your program sports dietitian regularly throughout this transition back to training.